Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashar. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll learn about how you can use Java methods in your XSLT in SOA 12C. A long time ago, we created a video on XSLT basics. I will put a link of that video in the YouTube card on the top of this video and also in the description box. However, I probably will touch base on basics on in this current video also. So, XSLT stands for XSL transformation and XSL stands for extensible style sheet language, which is nothing but a styling language for XML, like, like we have CSS for HTML and so on and so forth. Anyways, XSLT uses XPath to navigate XML. So if you would want to be good in XSLT, you need to be good in XPath also. And in XSLT, a style sheet contains one or more set of rules and they are called templates. All these basics are already covered in SOA tutorial playlist. So if you have not seen that, I would really appreciate and I would really appreciate if you can go ahead and check those out. So in SOA, we create XSL maps in order to transform source schema or source element or elements to a target schema or target element. The reason why I said schema or schemas in source and only schema in target because in XSLT maps, you can have multiple source elements or source schemas, but in target, it has to be only one. And JDeveloper provides us an XSL map editor to make our life easy and to be for us to be able to uh, create maps and do the testing also locally. All right, so enough with the theory and let's see how we can create an XSL map and how we can leverage Java in XSLT in SOA 12C. So I have this uh, application already there with a the couple of dummy projects. So let's create a new project. Let's call that project as Java in XSLT demo. So in this project, let me first create a schema, which will have two elements, source element and probably target element. And then we'll do the, we'll, we'll create an XSL map based on that schema only. So let me just do that. We want that in the schemas folder. I don't know why by default it goes to test suits. Let's click. We can change the target namespace if we want, but we can, for the demo purpose, I'm gonna leave it as it is. There you go. So let me have another element here. We'll just call this as source element and this one as target element. You can also go to source and do the editing, right? So I'll have name, I'm gonna set type as string. And just to save some time, let's go to source code and so I'll have name and I'll have probably city and also country. And in the target element, let's just have two, one which will say, let's say complete name and address all string and if we go to design you will see all the changes are there and then we are good to go we can create our first uh, transformation here so it goes under the transformations uh, folder in 11g those who have been working in 11g they do, they know that there is no directory structure in 11g it would come into the root directory of the project so 
to create a transformation or XSL map, you'll come here, click on this XSL map. And here you can choose your source schema like this. If you would want to add multiple source elements, so if there are multiple payloads which you would want to use or which you would want to leverage to create a target element, you would add those here by clicking on this plus icon. But as of now, we only have one element from source and one element from target. So I'm going to use the target schema here. Click on OK. And this what you see here is called XSLT editor provided by J developer. It has two views map and XSLT views. In XSLT view, uh, people often use this to create more complex mappings, but I have never used it and all the complex mappings can be done using this map also. And usually people would rely more on coding in the source directly now rather than in design, but it whatever floats your boat, you can do that. Uh, in source, if you see, there is one template. So set of rules within your style sheet is termed as template here. It will have an attribute called match and this backslash, I'm not sure if it's forward slash backslash, but this slash would mean it is pointing to the whole document, the current document. So anyways, uh, the one more thing that I would want to address here is in this schema for demo, I added both elements in same schema. It could be different schema altogether. I could have one source schema and target schema. So it's totally up to you or up to your business requirement what exactly you need to do. So anyways, uh, in this mapping sheet, we'll just map something like this. And if we check in the source, you see the complete name has been mapped to this X path and the X path goes like source element and name. If we come here, source element and name, right? We go to design. So it gives us a lot of options. All the options that you see in your assign activity of people, you can see those functions and everything in, in, in this mapper also. So if I right click on this address and if I go here, create X path, you would see tons of uh, different functions like conversion, date, logical, mathematical, node set string function and all of them can be used within your XSLT, right? It has flow uh, activities also, like you can choose when otherwise that would work like your if else. We have if also here, we have for each for looping and all. So all those kind of cool stuff that you can do, which I think we have covered in some of our videos within our SOA tutorials. So if you have not seen all those videos, I highly recommend you guys to check that. Today, just to give you guys uh, a gist of it, let's concat city and country and form an address out of it. So we'll have city and country and maybe I want to put a comma in between. Click on okay. Yep. So as of now, this is a basic transformation or the mapping that we have done. We have not used Java functions at all in here, but we'll do it uh, in a moment now. But first, this J developer and this XSLT mapper or XSLT editor gives us option to test the whole thing locally. So I will not have to deploy this or anything of that so I can test it locally by creating some dummy uh, source payloads. So if I click on this play icon here or the test icon, I can select this generate source XML file if I don't have it already. I'll click on this uh, checkbox, I'll click on OK and it generates the file for me, right? So for, I can change it as I want if I have a payload handy, which I would want to test, I can simply copy paste here 
and let's say Delhi and let's say India. Now the second time when I test it, I'll need to leave this unchecked because if I check it, it will again generate a source XML file for me with dummy values. And I don't want that because I want to test the values that I have put in there. So I'll click on OK. Yes. And that's what it does. So complete name is a direct mapping and city and country is something that I have added with a comma in it. So Delhi, India. So now there are chances i mean at least what i have seen is it's really important for us to know how we can leverage java functionality be it your project your people osb or xslt or x query it's always good to have that option to leverage java functionality right so previously we have created a video you that how you can use java embedding activity in your people in order to do base 64 encoding and base 64 decoding so we have done all kind of cool stuff there we have added try catch audit trail created a java called the java function using the java embedding activity so as a matter of fact the same thing can be done using xslt with a one line of code and we'll do that right now so if you have not seen if you want to relate what we did using java embedding and what we are doing here you can see that java embedding video also on our channel which will be part of our SOA tutorial series so whenever we want to add java functionality whether it is an an out of the box class or library given by java or if you have created a class of your own which you would want to leverage certain functionality from you can use uh, the same method all you need to do is go to source of your xslt and add the namespace which takes you to the fully qualified name of your class and then use that method within your template so let me show you how it works i've just reformatted it to see these are the already present namespaces here so i have the namespaces handy so let me add one of the namespaces that i have all right, so I'll add the namespace here. So this is the namespace that I have added, which is pointing to a fully qualified name of our string class. So under the Java Lang package, we have a string class and we would want to leverage some of the functionality that this particular class has to offer, which is an out of the box uh, library or, or class given by Java. Most of its functionality is already there within Beeple and XSLT, but there is something called replace all, which replaces the whole uh string it searches for a string and replaces that i'm not sure i think i don't think if it is provided directly to xslt functions so we'll try and leverage that and here is this uh java function is nothing but a prefix that i have given i could have used my name here like you see here it says uh dvm mhdr these are ns0 it could be anything it just whenever you would want to use some of the functionality which this namespace has to offer you'll need to prefix uh, this particular whatever you give here you need to prefix that with the function that you'll see in a minute when i'll use the replace all function of this package so what i'll need to do is i'll add i'll copy this because i'll need that colon and the method name it has to be exactly what is given in the documentation of that particular library it's case sensitive so what i'm saying here is that replace all in this particular string please search sanjay and replace it with let's say james and because we have used double quotes to complete this select statement we can use single quotes here or it could work the other way around also right the error is gone if you want you can keep double quotes here and single quotes here 
it will work right so now let's test if it is working or not so we'll go to design we have Sanjay here right click on this click on ok yes and you see this Sanjay has been changed to James correct and so this is one way there are bunch of options bunch of different methods that you can leverage within this particular uh, namespace so now we discussed that we'll will work on base 64 encoding and base 64 decoding also so let me add those namespaces also here i have those handy too here you go so i have added base 64 encoder base 64 decoder and given a fully qualified name of their classes right they are under the util package class is base64 decoder base64 encoder so let's first encode my name okay so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get rid of this statement and we'll use encoding here okay so as you know because i have used this as a name as a prefix here so i will have to use this right and its uh, method name is encode now it works similar to what we did with java embedding activity all right so once this is encoded uh, we want to encode my name so of course signature changes so we are removing all that all right i think that's all we need to do let me save it and test it all right you see this is encoded so now what we'll do is we'll decode it so i'm gonna put base 64 encoded string as part of my name here and let's decode it. All I'll have to do is just change this here. And just for the sake of keeping the code here, let me comment this out. And we can decode it now. So now because in the name I'm giving an encrypted string, this method should work and decode it. So let's see how it works. Here you go, it decoded it and now it's coming as Sanjay Prashar. So now you know, I mean, this is just to give you a basic idea on how you can leverage Java functionality. And once Java is an equation, now you know sky is the limit. You can do anything that you would want within your XSLT. Even if you do not use these Java functions, XSLT has tons of different stuff that you can do. You can create multiple templates. Certain template can be doing a certain functionality and you can call or apply template layer on top of it. So a lot of things can be done uh, using this. There is one of the projects that we have built in, in, in our organization, which is 90% XSLT. It's a, it's a huge revenue generating project for us. So I personally believe that all the people developers needs to be really good in XSLT. So this is something that you can, you know, uh, start from if you want. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. Take good care of yourselves and have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.